Oregon, what, what brought you to, to come here and what, what was it about this program that decided the job change for you? Just the familiarity with the Pac-12, just being a West Coast guy, you know, um, it's nice to be close to home. I'm from LA originally, so I just have a, um, you know, it's just one of those things I wanted to get back out here at some point. I didn't know if it was going to be Oregon or some other school or something like that, but I want to be back on the West Coast at some point in the Pac-12 uh, specifically. What has been the, I'll say, biggest adjustment? You've done it before, you did the main time of your career, but college football changes a lot in three or four years. So what, what was a big, big oh, yeah, adjustment? Changed significantly. I mean, the biggest thing has been the, just the recruiting with the NIL and the portal and all those different things like that. It's, it's uh, forever changing every single day. You know, so just staying on top of you got to recruit your own guys that are already in the program as well as other guys. And so that was an adjustment initially. I mean, it's not something that uh, is really difficult. It's just something you just have to adjust to and just be cognizant of. So what did you learn from the Steelers that you were able, or did you learn some things from then you're able to apply here now? Uh, just, uh, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a growth process. It doesn't matter if I went to another collegiate team or NFL team. Uh, you just grow in different ways. You know, I used to be in spread offense. Um, uh, throughout my uh, my time in the college ranks and then going into the NFL, you know, we run um, more pro style type deals, right? And they're coming back. Those are things that kind of integrated with what Kenny, what Kenny Dillingham does and, uh, you know, find a way to integrate those things so we can have success and kind of throw defenses off. And uh, it's been a pretty smooth transition. You know, the great thing about Kenny is he's just, Coach Dillingham is, they just really open to change and he's very familiar with a number of things. If you have, if, even if he hasn't run it before, he has a, uh, a uh, great understanding of the game as a whole, including the offensive line, so he's able to tie things together. So that's uh, made the transition fairly easy. Unlike other familiarity with Oregon being in the league before, but now that you're in this building and representing this, this school, has you seen something that you maybe didn't know about, or your expect your, your feelings have changed because of that? Like My feelings have changed in regards to just like the expectations of the atmosphere here or the facilities, uh, you know like. You know, the only time I was surprised is when we actually came here and played. At uh, UCLA, we came and played. Uh, I think we are both in the top ten. I think Mariota was here at the time. And uh, we ended up we were on the wrong side of it that day. Uh, but I remember looking at the capacity of the stadium and not realizing just how loud it was when I got here. You know, um, we know we had to work on silent count, but I didn't know if we'd have to use it. But it was the loudest stadium that we played in in our conference in, in my five years in, in, in the Pac-12. Uh, just the amount of... Uh, uh, you know, the affinity for the program in terms of community, not just over here, but even if I fly into Portland and they're coming down and just uh, it carries throughout the state. It's pretty it's pretty remarkable. I think this is one of the few places in our conference that has actual college game day experience, which, uh, you know, I feel like if you get a kid up here on a visit, you can get a kid, you know, not just because of the facilities, but because of everything as a whole, the community and all that true college town. Yeah. The past couple of seasons, Oregon's been known as a very run-heavy offense. And Coach Dillingham's talking about high tempo, pro style. How does that impact the, the approach uh, with the O-line, if at all? Well, we're just uh, we're ready to do both. You know, obviously as an offensive line coach, I love to run the ball, but I think we're going to be fairly balanced. And when he says we're going to be up tempo, it's not up tempo every single play. Uh, we're going to play with a sense of urgency, but it's not like we're just running up to the line. I think we'll change it up. Um, uh, change it up periodically throughout the game to keep the defense on their toes. Um, but it's something that we keep in our back pocket too, that if we can run the ball down somebody's throat, then we're going to do that, you know. This program the last couple of years have rotated a lot of guys. I understand you weren't a coach here for that, but just what's your philosophy of just the, the amount of rotations and how frequently you do? Yeah, I, I, you know, that's, I don't you know, if the, I wouldn't say anything's wrong with that. That's not what I like to do. I like to, to my preference is to develop some form of continuity amongst the group. Uh, I think it's better that way if guys could play together, um, that they get a better feel for one another. And when the running back is in the backfield, if he's following the same guys on combinations throughout the week, he knows how to set that up. And all of a sudden, it trickles to them as well. And pass protection, guys set different ways. You know, you could coach it all you want, but guys, you know, they do certain things. Some people are struggling with certain things. A guy may cut the edge on the right. On the other side, they may be a little firmer. So the quarterback has a little better pocket presence because there is a continuity because he gets a better feel for it. You know, you're changing one guy. Maybe things change up a, a little bit, but it's not significant enough that it changes everything. Whereas if you guys got, if you have guys, in my experience, if you guys have, if you have guys coming in and out, in and out, in and out, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uncertainty for other positions. And then there's a lack of continuity within the group. But you need to have position flexibility. And that's something we're working on right now. You know, we don't have any definitive starters. We just have guys that we're moving around a little bit, getting a better, getting a feel for them. Um, especially for me, there's a couple guys I'm aware of because, you know, they were guys that were potential draft picks. Um, but I want to see how guys work in combinations, you know, and just uh, then we'll go from there. I just going to say, what your impressions of this offensive line? It's probably one of the more experienced units in all of college football with a lot of guys using that extra year of eligibility. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing. There, there's a foundation to build off of. 
you know, the one thing they did a really nice job of is, is getting guys with good character. Like in our room, we have a lot of guys that have good character. They're a tight-knit group. Um, and any time you have that, then you can focus on just football. So we've been able to focus on that. There's some things that, you know, I teach and some things I want to implement that are kind of almost polar opposite of what they've been doing. So that's been a process, you know, and just drilling that out. Um, but it'll come with time, you know, and just uh, we're getting better each day, you know. Hopefully we'll be ready, you know, week one and have it the way I want it to be. And, but the guys are more than willing to do it, and they're working their tails off to get there. What's that, that fight like for Jackson Powers Johnson if he's offense, defense? Is... Well, I lost that one initially, <laughs> so hopefully he gives it to me in the end. You know, I don't want to give him up. Uh, I watched it just like a fan. You know, my youngest son, this is his favorite school. Yeah. Even when I was at UCLA, one day I made him come to the locker room with no shirt on because he had, he had the nerve to wear a damn Oregon shirt to a UCLA game. But, um, you know, it's like it's something I'm familiar with because he watches the games, so I watch it with him. But I saw the bowl game and I saw maybe two or three games during the season. So, um, yeah, obviously, bowl game, he played on that side of the ball. Yeah. Um, I think he's a good player. He's, he has a great competitive spirit, you know, and that carries him a long way. And then he's a physical player. Um, I love him having him on my side of the ball, but that's all to me up to coach. He can be a good player for us on either side of it, and we both need him. So, After having an experience at the college level and then most recently in the NFL, what are some of the differences you, you've noticed between college and pro offensive linemen? Are there, are there maybe some, some areas that college guys tend to need a little bit more work at? Yeah, you notice when you're going in the NFL, guys coming in, but that, that, that's not something new. That was even when I was in college the first time. Um, they're not as technically sound, and I think that's because of what guys are doing schematically as offensive coordinators people aren't being taught to fit combinations and how to displace defenders and different things like that because it's not needed. Everything is laterally, you know, and that's one of the things that I'm saying is a polar opposite of maybe what they're doing before. A lot of things they want to do is fit into line scrimmage, be a little more physical at the point and all that. Um, and like I said, there's nothing wrong or right. It's just a different style and different mentality, you know, and just uh, I like to impose our will on people and not kind of I want to be the reason why we're breaking for 20 yards and not be we're just covering them up and letting those guys do all the work. So I like to get to a point where we can put the team on our back and we can carry games out. And if we're running and have a nice day and we're averaging a good amount and we can make you know move the you know ball and then maybe hit 30 runs in a game, you know, and they're everywhere outside, inside, get big men running in space and all that. So um, I just think just there's been a lack of uh, not here in particular, but just in college football as a whole, you've seen over the last decade, there's been a real lack in technique and, um, and physicality getting up. The focus has been more primarily on getting athletes and guys that can move laterally on that. So when they get up at that level, you have to be a grown ass man and move guys off the point. And a lot of guys aren't able or capable of doing that. So you have to change the game at that level to kind of mimic this a little bit until you get to that point. And those teams that are able to play like that are able to physically dominate other teams. You can tell the teams that, you know, put the focus on those type of linemen and the, those that don't. You talked about how it's almost been like you're asking them to do the polar opposite of what they're they're used to. How has that transition been going from, you know, them being like the, the sole focus almost with Cristobal being an offensive lineman focus um, to now? How has that transition been? How they reacted? Well, this is still the main focus, the primary focus, and I still think they're the leaders on the team. It's just from a technical standpoint, we do things differently. And that's not saying that anything they were doing was wrong. It's just a different... It's just a different style of player, a different mentality that I want to play with, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it could be opposite, but it's not saying that what they're doing is right and what I'm doing wrong. You know, I'm friends with Mario and, and those guys, and, you know, I, I think they do a good job. It's just, you know, I prefer to do it a certain way, and I coach a certain way, and that's the way we're going to do it. So, and How do you think they've reacted to that philosophy? Uh, they've been receptive to it. It's one of those things you could introduce, and they've had some success, but then when you show something, you know, I make intercuts of what – Maybe they did last year, and hey, this what you're doing it right. Look at the difference. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, you know, I see, and then kind of ends the conversation, you know. But there is a frustration of sometimes it's not as consistent because it is a learning process, and sometimes you divert back to things that you did before, uh, previously, and it's just uh, getting guys to get um, confidence in their abilities, and we want to rep it enough and and uh, do it correctly enough times that you can start operating with unconscious competence. So we're just working on that and trying to master that. Coach, you guys have been going between Bo and Ty at quarterback. Is there a difference in protection when Bo's at quarterback or when Ty's at quarterback? No, they're both quality guys, and they both bring different elements. Uh, uh, they both have really good qualities about them. They're a little bit different, but, I mean, they're very talented, and they just uh, – we're running with Kenny Runs, and if he makes some adjustments to it, he does to, um, to maybe – playing to some things that they do exceptionally well. But for the most part, we keep the offense the same, you know, and there are some things that I think once we get into it and, you know, a guy uh, presents himself as a starter, maybe there's some elements that we put some things in that play to his strengths more. But right now it's just open competition and coaches, you know, just putting in the offense and guys are learning it. Mm -hmm. you can watch film from, from practice, just what do you look for? What are you defining as that this was a good practice today when you watch film and close the book on that? I think everything, I, I, you know, for me it's about effort. So, like, uh, 
you know, good practice to me is about effort and just uh, uh, just playing with a competitive spirit. You know, I don't think anything's ever going to be pra uh, perfect. Um, you know, our, our, our aim is for perfection, but that's not realistic in terms of we've got to keep building to each day. So as long as they give them maximum effort and they're being competitive and playing with some, some juice a little bit, then I can work with everything else. So that's just give me that and we, and we can work around all the other stuff and improve every day.